Welcome back to Weird Stuff in a Can. It's been a little while. Today on Weird Stuff in a Can we've got Afrimalt. So yeah, this is a can of Afrimalt, premium non-alcoholic malt drink, which was given to me as a present, so I don't know how much it cost. This is a non-alcoholic carbonated malt beverage popular in Africa. In fact, there are lots and lots of different brands and varieties of this. Super Malt, I think, is one of the leading brands. Uh, let's just see what we've got to say. There's not a lot to read here. This is basically, it's beer without the alcohol. It's beer that hasn't been brewed because it's got the ingredients of water, barley malt, sugar, colour E150C, carbon dioxide, hops extract. So it's, it is basically beer. It just hasn't been brewed. So anyway, what else? It says non-alcoholic on it. One, two three, four, five times. That's obviously the selling point of this, is that this is a non-alcoholic drink. So I, I suppose in its context, it's a bit like an energy drink because it is just sugar water. So there are 53 calories per 100 ml. So there's about 250 calories in this can, 260 calories in this can, made by Aframilk UK Limited. And here's a strange thing. So the can is labeled in English and French. No big surprises there. Those are kind of the two primary European languages of Africa from former British and former French colonies, obviously. But this is made in Germany. So made in Germany, labelled in English and French. It also contains biotin. I'm not even sure what biotin is. I'm going to have to look that up. Not a lot else to say about this. It's still in date. And I'm not just going to open it just yet because it says best served chilled, and this is not chilled. I don't want to chill it down and have to keep wiping condensation off the label when we're reading it. Anyway, I'm going to go and chill this down and then we'll give it a taste. Right, back from the fridge. This is now fully chilled down. Nice little hiss there. And then... So it looks like cola, but of course it isn't cola. I'm just interested to know what kind of a head it has. It looks like it maintains a fairly persistent foamy head, which malt is a kind of gloopy, sticky sugar. So I imagine that's helping to preserve the head a bit there. Yeah, you can smell the malt in there. It's probably smelling the sort of caramelized notes from the malt tasting. Hmm. Actually, I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought this would be overpoweringly sweet. It is sweet, but it's also quite flavorful. You can taste the kind of graininess of the malt. So it's got a bit of a sort of bready flavor note to it. Let's do this like I would with a beer, which is, I'll try and tell you what happens first, what happens in the middle and what lingers. First flavor note is just a, like a caramel sweetness. And then in the middle there are grainy, bready, toasty sort of notes. And the malty taste that's left at the end is ever so slightly sort of chocolatey. Mm. I'm enjoying that more than I expected to actually. I thought that was gonna be just syrupy sweet and difficult to enjoy, but I'm actually enjoying that quite a lot. However, it is a very sugary drink. And so I'm not gonna drink all of this in this context. I thought I might try and do something with it. I reckon we can boil this down and use it as a base for a barbecue sauce. So let's head to the kitchen and try that now. So here in the kitchen, my probably about 400 mil left of Afri malt is gonna go in this pan and I'm gonna reduce that down. I'm gonna boil that down to get most of the water out of it. We'll be left with the malt syrup, which is probably where this actually started from. We're kind of undoing the manufacture of this product. So I'm just going to bring that to the boil and then gently simmer to reduce it. I'm using a wide pan like this so that we've got a maximum of surface area for evaporation to happen. So while that's reducing over there on the cooker, I've got some lovely tomatoes. These are from the garden. I haven't even been out there and picked tomatoes today. These are from yesterday. We've got so many tomatoes to use up. We've got about maybe 
400 grams of tomatoes. I'll pick the ripest ones out of here because I'm going to stew these down. And I'm also going to have about half a small onion. I dice this very small because I want this to cook down more or less to a pulp. And so that onion, together with the tomatoes, which I'll just roughly dice, these are going to get stewed down, then I'll sieve it. So tomatoes just cut up into rough chunks and all of that's going to go in there on top of those onions. So over here we can see that the, the malt is reducing, there's a little kind of tide line there and tomatoes are just going to stew down. In with the tomatoes, about a level teaspoon of salt and as well as obviously seasoning, that will help to draw the juices out of the tomatoes and break them down. Also about a level teaspoon of smoked paprika and about a teaspoonful of malt vinegar and fresh thyme. Stalks can go in there as well because we're going to be sieving that. 20 minutes later the malt drink has reduced down quite a bit, it still needs to go further, but these tomatoes are completely cooked down now. So this cooked tomato sauce, I'm going to sieve it directly into this pan. that looking like. You look pretty good. And we'll have to reduce this some more. So tomato and malt and herbs and onion. A little bit of allspice, probably a quarter of a teaspoon. About the same amount of ground cinnamon and again same amount ground ginger. Now obviously quite conservative on the spices but this is going to get reduced down. Let's now come to the boil. I will turn that down and we're just going to simmer that gently to drive off the moisture. That's been simmering now for about 10 minutes. So those spices are now infused. Everything in there is as cooked as it's going to get. So this is a good opportunity to give it a little taste. Quite sweet. So just to balance that, I'll put in another teaspoonful of vinegar. And you can see how it's really thickening up now as I reduce it. So I'm trying to make sure it doesn't burn on the edges of the pan but it's really getting quite syrupy now. Another little taste. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Just needed that little bit of extra vinegar. Do you know what? Thickened up a bit more, that'd make a very good ketchup. Okay, slight change of plan. I was gonna use this as a glaze for roast meat. So I was gonna put this on some chicken and roast it in the oven. I still could do that, but what I've made here is accidentally a really nice ketchup. I think I'm going to use it as ketchup. So I've kind of quite accidentally made an Afri malt and tomato ketchup. There's nothing more than tomatoes and the malt thickening that. And when you buy bottles of ketchup in the supermarket, you're getting a bit of cornstarch in there to thicken it. This is thickened with tomatoes. This jar that I'm putting this into is not sterile. I haven't sterilized this. This is not for long-term preservation. The jar is what I would call, well actually what my friend Steve at Fruitwise Heritage Orchard would call socially clean, which means it's clean. But this is not for long-term preservation. You'd have to can it if you wanted to do that, which means boiling it in a water bath to sterilize the insides. I don't think this needs that because I don't anticipate storing this for a long time. In fact, I anticipate using this in a few days. So with the lid sealed and then the fridge, this will keep for a month, especially as it's got the acidity from the tomatoes and vinegar in there. And of course the sugar is a preservative. Anyway, I'm just going to let that cool a little bit so we don't get too much condensation on the lid. And then we'll put that in the fridge. As I say, I didn't spread this on chicken. We've just got roast chicken. And I've just stolen a potato wedge so I can give this ketchup a proper taste. So it looks like ketchup. I'd say that could maybe stand to be reduced a little bit more, but I've been served thinner ketchup than that in the past. The most important thing is, what does it taste like? That's 
really good. At the risk of blowing my own trumpet, that might be the nicest ketchup I've ever had. And I think there are two things about that. One is, those were homegrown tomatoes, they're just full of flavour. But also I think the malt really helps. Regular white sugar, like you might find as an ingredient in store-bought ketchup, it's really kind of a one-dimensional sweetness. Malt is something a little bit different. Malt is, is a, a kind of broader, more rounded taste. It's not just sweet, it's got other dimensions to the flavour. And I think that makes a big difference in this ketchup. I'm not washing that away by the way, I'm going to go and steal another wedge and just finish that off. So there we go, homemade tomato and Afri malt ketchup. I really, really like that. I might do a bigger batch. So that was Afri malt. Probably not actually weird, but new to me. So weird stuff in a can on Atomic Shrimp. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.